So the world where more people are raped, but less people die, is better than the world where more people die and less people are raped. Yeah, because, I mean, this, these are people's lives that we're talking about here, right? If you have some people that are traumatized for life, that sucks, but they can survive it and they can make it through that. I think that there are things that you can do to trade away kind of the importance of your life. One of those things would be aggressing on other people. Um, the more extreme version of this would be incredible aggressions against other people. So for instance, when you are willing to murder somebody or less severely, when you're willing to rape somebody, it feels like the value of your life when held in comparison to other people's lives, especially your victim, is gonna be severely diminished. I've never seen rape as extreme as these other things. Okay, but I think I mean, most people just... probably view rape as being pretty extreme, right? Hey everybody, tonight we're debating whether or not it's ethically permissible to smite an abuser or rapist, and we are starting right now with Stephen's opening statement. Thanks so much for being with us, Stephen. The floor is all yours. Hey, I think that as long as you've got somebody on proper notice and somebody is going to either enact violence against you or um, invade or steal something that you belong or do some damage to your person or pers or do, so do, bleh, do some damage to a loved one, you ought to be able to defend yourself. The level of that defense is going to escalate all the way up to whatever is necessary. So for instance, if somebody tries to um, steal something of yours and you punch them and they punch back and then you kick them and then they pull out a knife, you can pull out a gun, et cetera, et cetera. So I think that it is within your right to defend your body, your person, the things next to you with as much force as necessary. And then depending on how the other person decides to respond that can go up to and including killing the person. You got it. Thank you very much for that quick and pithy opening statement. We're going to kick it over to Rose, but want to say, folks, if it's your first time here, welcome to Modern Day Debate. We're a neutral platform hosting debates on science, religion, and politics. And we hope you feel welcome no matter what walk of life you're from. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button as we have many more juicy debates coming up. And with that, thanks, Rose. The floor is all yours as well for your opening. Thank you. So I would say that I feel like it's I, understandably a lot of victims in these cases feel like they feel angry at what the person that did to them, or what the person they fear is going to do with them. And that's completely understandable. However, when it comes to murder, this is somebody's life that you're taking. And when it comes to that, you have to be very sure that you're acting in right case. But I feel like in terms of self-defense, this is something that I feel like in a lot of cases, people have been way too lenient about. I feel like a perfect example of this is talking about the cops in particular. The cops so often shoot innocent black people or people with mental disabilities because they think they're acting in self-defense. They're so convinced that they're in immediate danger and that this person is going to kill them, when in reality, that is not the case. Now, obviously, when it comes to a person you know, being raped or about to be raped, that's not the same. It's not the same situation. However, I see posts from like feminists online all the time posting their fantasies and how they really want to murder their rapist or sometimes people do it. I just think it's a really toxic environment and I don't think we should be encouraging this behavior. And I think that we, you know, if somebody kills another human being, unless your life is immediately in danger, I don't think you're justified in doing that. You got it. Thanks very much. And we're going to jump into open discussion. If you have questions, folks, fire them into the old live chat at Modern Day Debate. If you tag me with that Modern Day Debate, I will get those questions and we'll read them during the Q&A following open discussion. Thanks very much, Stephen. And Rose, the floor is all yours for open dialogue. Um, so, okay, so first we need to figure out what the actual, like, moral principle is before we get into, like, the logistics of deploying said moral principle. Um, so, for instance, it sounded like you were saying killing somebody in self-defense may or may not be morally permissible, but that's not relevant because sometimes people will do it accidentally. Is that, do we want to talk about the principle or do we want to concede the principle and say, okay, it is principally okay to kill somebody if they're trying to rape you, but, and then go on to like the practicality of it. Um, I would say, I don't even know if it is if someone's trying to rape you. I'm sympathetic to that, right? If somebody kills their rapist or someone like, you know for a fact, there's no nuance whatsoever, this person's going to rape you. I'd say if that person kills them, it's not the worst thing in the world, um, but I wouldn't say that that's necessarily okay, but it's like, I don't think that that's like, terrible um but if you want we can just like move on from that and be like okay fine well that's well this is pre it's pretty important because it's technically the topic of the debate so yeah let's let's phrase this so um i'm gonna use generally i just want to stick to good or bad so good is an action that we ought to do or if we do it it'd be considered a morally virtuous thing to do bad is going to be an action that we ought to avoid and if we do it um you have some moral culpability of performing a bad action so if somebody is um if somebody comes up to you and they, we'll just say somebody is trying to rape somebody, and let's say the other person has no capacity to stop it without killing the person, 
Would it be a good thing to kill the rapist? Can they kill the rapist or would that be a bad thing? I think maybe there's more justification to do so, um, but I wouldn't say that that's a good thing. I think the only like rational thing is to just be like, okay, this is a traumatic thing I just did. I feel guilty about this, you know. So spending the rest of your life thinking, you know, is there could have, could have I done something different? Because I think that's a normal human response. I'm some kind of empathy for the person you just killed, right? Even if it is 100% just, I would say that that's like the only, because I see people who are like, yeah, I killed this person. And then people online being like, yeah, you're a hero. Kudos to you. And it's like, I don't think that that's really healthy. Right. Sure. So, so we're like, looking at like we're taking more of a psychologically based analysis of this now. I don't care about the psychology. Just looking at the okay. ethics. Somebody comes up to you and they're trying to rape you. Do you have a right to defend yourself up to and including lethal force? Uh, I would prefer non-lethal methods overall. I don't want to be the person. I mean, I guess I am kind of being the person right now. I don't want to be the person that says like you have to sit down and take it because that sounds really shitty. And I feel like a person has a right to have that sort of bodily autonomy and not want that, right? And I've had enough debates on this to realize that, yeah, that this is probably not the hill I want to die on, right? So well, I'm, sure, I'm I not trying, like I mean, it's a, it's a difficult moral question, but you're, you're, you're in the sketchy position, so of course you have to own a sketchy, <laughs> or, or like yeah. a difficult bullet. But like the question is, is so somebody, so you have no other recourse, you can't call the cops, you don't have a non-lethal way of de-escalating. All you have on you is a gun. Person has made their intentions clear. I'm coming up to you to rape you. Do you have the right to defend yourself with lethal force? It will involve the killing of the other person to avoid you getting raped. Not when I say you, I don't mean you personally, I just mean you in the general sense. Does one have the right to employ lethal force to pretend, pre prevent one from being raped by another? Uh, I would say if I if I were to say yes or no, I guess I'd say yes with an asterisk being that like, you know, you're taking that person's life, you know, and this is a non lethal action like rape has like what it's like the death from rape is so low in the United States, I can't even find a statistic for it. I tried to look for one. Um, so it's like it's a non lethal force. And you're punishing that person with a death penalty, which I wouldn't say is really just, but it's like at the same time, this is the only way to prevent that rape, then I guess it can be ethical in that position. Okay. But then don't, so then don't we just agree? Uh, I don't, I don't think that we do. Uh, I, have you seen the viral tweet that I made no, <laughs> about like rape and uh, it was basically this rape device. So in South Africa, someone, <laughs> Oh, I'm aware of this tweet. I did see it. Yeah. Yeah, it was a, it was a whole thing. Mm -hmm. uh, so basically, the idea was that this defense, this, this device was going to protect women from rape, right? Mm -hmm. And that the woman would put it on, it would prevent her from getting raped, and that the man would have to go to the hospital to remove this thing. Yep. And the problem with that, though, is I feel like that is cruel and unusual punishment. And I feel like this is like a torture device. Like, this wouldn't even be approved for, like, prisoners of war. And I feel like it's horrifying that people are, like, you know, rooting for this thing. So again, differences here. We can talk about people's response to it and we can talk about like the practicality of it, but ethically, would it be okay to have a trap inside your body that if somebody were violating you, they would spring the trap? Do we, is it yeah. e ethical? If you, if you have a trap inside your body so that if somebody violates you, do you have a right to have that trap in your body? Like, is that ethically, ethically, do you think you should be able to? I think that that is like, I mean, the way that the trap is, it literally makes the person have to go to the hospital. Mm -hmm. They have to see a doctor. Now, the, the goal with that, obviously, is like, oh, well, they have to see a doctor. Then we'll know that this person raped the person. Well, sure. Right? We don't even need to worry so, about that part. Let's say, the, let's say the device comes off after an hour, or that's not really relevant. Do you think that a woman has a right to implant a device like that in her body? I would say so if it wasn't gonna, you know, cause a lot of pain onto the other person and send them to the hospital. And also it's gonna make it like, the way the device is, it's going to put that woman in danger too. Because, sure, these are, you know, so these are questions of, of pain, yeah, these are questions of practicality, not ethical questions, right? So the ethical question is, somebody tries to rape one, does one have the right to protect themselves with unusual measures, like, a, like an anti-rape condom? Should they have the right to do that? Is that an ethical action from them? If it doesn't, send the person to the hospital why would right? okay if it's a let's harmless, if it's a harmless device and it doesn't do any harm to the person and all mm -hmm. it does is protect them then yeah okay so let's but push let's going... push one more let's say why why would it be morally wrong to send that person to the hospital because you're inflicting more harm into the world right i'm a pacifist right so this this rapist is putting mm -hmm. harm onto the rapist or the, the very victim um, but when you have this device, 
you're putting unnecessary harm onto somebody else. And this is the opposite of where we need to go. I mean, yeah, but aren't you trying like, to, oh, aren't you doing so in the hopes of avoiding taking harm onto yourself? Yes, but I feel like the means don't justify it. Don't they kind of though? Like, isn't there a difference between defensive harm versus like aggressive harm? Or are we really measuring all these things to be the exact same? Um, I guess, but I mean, here's the thing I want to mention, right? Is like when people talk about rape, I feel like they don't like understand what rape is. Like someone's not going to wear this device like all the time. Like I think yeah, sure. I mean, those are these are issues yes, of practicality yeah. and not ethical questions, right? So we're just looking at the ethics of it. Like, let's say that somebody is going to come to you and they're going to perform a, a level seven harm, but you could protect yourself from them. But in protecting yourself, you're going to inflict on them a level nine harm. D do we really just measure these as the exact same when you have an aggressor versus somebody acting defensively? Well, level nine is above level seven. So yes. that would automatically like assume that that's an unjust response to it. Like this isn't even an arm and a leg at this point. This is like an arm for like an arm and a leg. <laughs> Well, yeah, but the idea is like sometimes people that are defending themselves don't have the ability to defend themselves employing the same level of harm. Usually if somebody's doing harm to another person, it's, it's actually because they have a greater ability to inflict harm. So the other side has to respond with some escalatory measure, right? Like it's very rare that somebody's gonna go up and try to violently rape somebody that's stronger than them, right? It's, it's generally the opposite way, right? I mean, men do become victims at times, but I do agree with you in the general aspect. Yeah. So in the case, and even when men do, it's often because there are like, say, substances involved that inhibit that person's ability to respond, right? Or there can be other games involved. But like I'm saying, in a general sense, usually if you're defending yourself, if somebody's bringing a certain level of harm, you usually have to at least match it. And then oftentimes, if you're trying to end the conflict instead of engage in like a fun fight, you probably have to go overboard, right? Like if somebody shows up outside your house and they're ready to throw punches, they're like, let's fight, I'm ready to fucking box. Right? Well, you could go out and like, okay, fuck it, let's box. Or you could get a gun or a knife or whatever, be like, I need you to leave. Like, you can't just come and attack me. I'm not gonna entertain your challenge for a fight. Uh, I mean, like, I, I, I don't agree in the sense that like, you have to, ha I, I don't, I wouldn't necessarily say you have to go like overboard in your defense measures, right? Like, I feel like a lot of the measures that like are often used and like, for instance, like using a gun is just like, it's just this huge, thing like well like let's rape is awful well let's like focus on the defensive thing right here right if you're defending against something you always have to escalate otherwise you're just having a fun fight right don't you always have to uh, like let's say somebody shows up outside with a knife okay and somebody's like oh shit like somebody came with a knife they're gonna invade our home like would the answer be like okay i'm gonna go grab my knife from downstairs and we're gonna knife fight well no you, you're always gonna escalate to the next level because they're aggressing on you you want to end the conflict not entertain like a fun challenge right I guess, but I mean, the thing is, obviously, you try to flee the situation if you can, but assuming you can't, I of mean, course. you have to defend yourself in some way. If someone's putting a knife up to you and is trying to harm you with it, then yeah, you can kill that person because that person's going to do some serious harm to you. Sure, and but if it's a guy that's like, no yeah, but if there's a guy that's 2x larger than you and he wants to inflict harm on you, you're probably also going to grab a knife or a gun, right? Um, Probably. No, wait, no, hold on. on. Wait, I feel let's. Like harm is so vague, though. No, like, it's harm not. Could be like we, we don't. Someone. We don't. We don't have to make it vague. We're having ethical okay, debates, okay. so we can be as crystal clear or as vague as we want, because they're all hypotheticals, right? Somebody comes up with fists, and they're going to inflict a level five harm on somebody, and that other person, the only way they can respond is with a gun or a knife, a level nine or a ten harm, right? Doesn't that person have the right to respond and escalate if the other person's the one bringing the fight? Because the other person's already escalating, right? They're going from zero harm to bringing it up to a five. So don't you have a right to shut it down if you can't respond at the appropriate level? I mean, they have a right to in some extent, but I feel like they also have a moral justification to try non-lethal methods, to try expose all those other methods. Yep. And, if and we agree those... We agree with that, right? It, that's that's okay. why like, if a nine-year-old comes up to me, we're not pulling out the AR-15 and like blowing the dude away onto the sidewalk, right? We could probably just push his head away. But like... In the case of rape, we're typically talking about a, a, a power unbalanced uh, situation where one side doesn't have the ability to nonviolently subdue the other. So in that case, some level of violence is going to be brought out, and that it's oftentimes going to be lethal, right? We can say that, like, for purposes of our conversation, we can say that a woman might have the obligation to do bear mace or something first if she has that. That's fair, maybe. But, like, ultimately, if push comes to shove, is one person forced to bear the actions of an aggressor? instead of like taking lethal actions against the aggressor. Like it seems like if there's only one or the other, why why one or not the other? I mean, it, it's like, that's the thing though. It's like, you don't, 
And this is kind of similar how I feel about abortion. It, it's feel, it sucks to have to say to somebody, I don't, you know, because a lot of time people hear my position or hear my tweet and my opinions are more nuanced than that now. But like when they saw my tweet, they thought, oh, this person's pro right. This person's saying that women should just sit there and take it. And it's like, no, I just, I just don't think that like, it's the worst thing in the world compared to literally being murdered. I, I feel like it, if you're gonna kill somebody, like that person could become a good person later in life. You know, rapists like have a really high they could, but are like, you expected to bear the crimes of that person while they're on their own personal journey of redemption? I mean, like, I I don't think it's moral to, um, but I, I it, see, this is tricky for me. I, I mean, like, I guess you shouldn't have to, um, but I, it would probably be better if you could let the person live. I, th I think that'd be the better thing. But we're not to talking do, about just letting gonna, them live. Not... We're talking about whether or not you have to bear the 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 aggression that they're levying on you just because maybe in the yeah. future. Yeah, and, and that's the thing is like I'm not going to judge somebody. If well, they decide we're not talking that... about your personal judgments. We're just talking about the ethics of the situation, right? Yeah, I guess so. I, and that's what I said. It's like I don't think it's good, but I think in some rare cases it might be justified because in the vast majority of rapes, these are like people you know, right? Sure, but we're not I mean, talking about. We're only some... we're only working on the ethics. We don't care about the vast majority of the statistics, the psychology, the outcome. We're just only looking at the ethics. Okay. Somebody knows that somebody is going to rape them, and they're in the process of getting raped, and the only way they can respond is with lethal force. Should that person have the right yeah. to kill the other person, or do they have to just get raped because they're not allowed to? I mean, is this some, is this per like hypothetically, is this person a stranger? Is this someone that this person knows? Because if it's someone they know, then that's going to make like the question like a lot more like, oh my, you know? I don't think it's meaningful, but you can explore the difference if you want. Let's say somebody you know. Yeah, well, if it's like a family member or like a close friend and you're killing them because of that, mm -hmm. I mean, that's going to have like a lot of impact. And I just... Well, sure, but now, that, now we're getting into psychology. I don't care about impact. Okay, that's okay, fine. Because fine. getting raped can have fine. a lot of impact as well, right? Yeah, I can. it can. It can definitely lead to some negative psychological So shouldn't effects. the agency be on the side of the defender here to decide how they want to deal with the situation? Because you're, you keep saying like it could have negative psychological implications. Well, the defender can choose not to do anything then if they want. They can just get raped and then see how it goes afterwards. But we're at, right now we're trying to figure out ethically, do they have an ethical right to defend themselves with lethal force? Technically, yes, I would say. But I would like heavily like hesitate that it's probably not the right thing to do. Well, how can we say something is ethical, but it's not the right thing to do? What do you mean by it's not right? What what would right would respect I, you to could work? you could you can make a very strong stance to argue that this was justified to prevent the harm of the person. That there was no other way to prevent that harm of that person. Therefore, it is fine to do so in this case. Mm -hmm. um, I would just say though that I just don't believe that it justifies murder doing so because we're there's a lot of times where we're personally inconvenienced in our life. But I don't think the proper response of that is to just shoot the other person to avoid any negative effects. Now, obviously, this is an extreme case of that. Sure. Let's say that you weigh. Like let's say that you're a 100-pound woman, and you walk in, and there's a 250-pound elite-level bodybuilder about to rape your five-year-old child. Child will survive, no problem. But it'll be a little traumatized, a little worse for wear. Do you think in that case you have a right to murder the 250 pound bodybuilder or do you think that because murder is worse than like surviving rape do you think that, that would be unethical to intervene in that situation this is really tricky because you're putting me in a tight like because you know this is like probably the most justifiable case you can think of well, but how right? is it justifiable the child's not going to die and you're talking about killing somebody else for inconveniencing the child might be a pretty severe inconvenience but it's an inconvenience yeah. nonetheless right I mean, there's like studies that like, you know, kids who like get raped, like they have that, you know, it's psychological for the rest of their life and also just kind of a really sick person to do such a thing. I mean, most rapes are probably going to be pretty psychological for the rest of your life, but. Yeah, I, I would hope uh, that, I mean, in that case, it, it's probably pretty okay to murder the person. You're still doing more harm, though, than what they'd be doing by just raping. Yeah, and that's why I'm like, I'm like hesitant, you know, it's like. I don't, I don't think killing is good, but if it prevents the, because it's like, the person's not going to die, mm -hmm. and that's good. Like, the person has a chance, that's the thing, the person has a chance to, like, the five-year-old could, after being raped, potentially live a normal life, yep. free of, like, psychological effects, or, well, maybe some. Mm -hmm. I just feel like the other person never really gets that chance, though. Well, and they did like, get a chance, but arguably, keep in mind, the other person is not randomly being killed. 
right? Them getting killed is a consequence of them violating the agency of another person. And assuming they understand what they're entering into, right? That should be factored into their choice, right? Unless the person is literally being mind controlled or is mentally ill or is a child themselves and doesn't understand. This is kind of like implicitly what they're understanding there. They have the agency to make a choice and they're doing an action knowingly violating the agency of another person. So it's not like it's just random that like, oh my God, a boulder fell off a cliff and this person died, right? Yeah, I mean, obviously that person's doing something inherently despicable and obviously that person knows the dangers and what they're doing and the moral like wrong of what they're doing. Um, I'm just very like pro giving people chances. I'm pro prison reform. I'm pro all of this. So I hate to see it. But obviously sure, but prison reform and all that is different. Point. That's when we're not, we're not avoiding harm at that point. Now we're just like um, meeting out consequences right or punishment that's a different different type of thing criminal justice system we're not dealing with people that are actively harming yeah. somebody or about to harm somebody yeah i mean i, I guess i'll say in this case is it's it's okay okay i mean you're giving me the most extreme case obviously sure that's okay but um, now i'm gonna, but I'm, I'm, gonna I'm, not, I'm not i'm not gonna cry that this person's dying you know Sure. So let's blow this rule out then to all of society and let's look at two different principles that we could use to analyze the ethics of these interactions. In one society, a person that is raping somebody should ne ought never to be killed. That would actually be punishable because we don't want to kill people just for doing something that's less than killing somebody. Okay. And then yeah. in another society, people can be killed just for raping somebody. Which of these societies do we think overall would be like a morally better place to live? The society where people uh. can rape with impunity or the society where rapists get killed with impunity? I would say the better society is the one where nobody gets killed. And the reason for this is because feminists have learned the definition of what rape is so much that like- Wait, hold on, we're not, we're, not, we're not talking about feminist definitions or any of the weird, I'm talking about guy holds a girl down, forces his penis in her vagina, or woman holds a guy down, forces her vagina, and whatever. I'm talking about good old fashioned rape, okay? Not the new stuff, not the no, new, not no the Zoomer rape. Well, not, no, no, well, we're not. We're in the. We're still in an ethical world of hypothetical nuances for okay. particular matters. So, in one gotcha. world, you're allowed to good old fashioned rape with impunity, and in the other world, you're allowed to good old fashioned shoot in the head people that try to rape. What world is like more moral? It's a better world, morally. I'm gonna give a slight preference to the one where no one dies. I think they're both bad worlds, and I think that you know, obviously, this is why extremes are bad. In my personal opinion, I would I, I, tep I tend to believe the one where less people die uh, in the general scene of things, because I believe that a human life I'm pro life. I believe human life is more important than anything else. So if we have a sure, life, but how do you. A, OK, a, well, so let's I'm trying to think of. So the world where more people are raped, but less people die is better than the world where more people die and less people are raped. Yeah, because, I mean, this, these are people's lives that we're talking about here. Like, if you have some people that are traumatized for life, that sucks. But they can survive it, and they can make it through that. The person who gets killed has no chance of redemption, no chance of any of that. So as awful mm -hmm. as it is, mm -hmm. I tend to go with the one where people at least have that chance. Okay, do you think that all human life is morally equivalent? Uh, for the mo Yeah, I would say so. Okay, let's say I, we I, have I, two people in a room... Um, Let's say that we have three people in a room, okay? We've got person A, person B, and person Z, okay? Person Z is tied to a chair, yeah. okay? Then you've got person A and person B. A has a gun, and this guy is about to kill person Z, and B is just standing there. Do you think that there is a moral equivalence between killing A and B? Well, when... Okay, I think the one exception to this is when someone is literally threatening the life of somebody else. Okay, sorry, let me back it off, person. do a different thing. Person Z is instead somebody tied to a bed, a might rape that person, B is never gonna rape them. They're just standing there, but A, A is going to rape Z. Do you think there's a moral equivalence between killing A and killing B? One is about to rape the other, one is about to rape person Z. So I think it would be worse to kill the person tied up than the person like- No, 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 not rape. the person tied up. We're talking about two people in a room. One of them okay, wants yeah. to rape the tied up person. The other one is just standing there. He's not gonna rape anybody. Do you think there's a moral okay. equivalence between killing these two people? I think that there is, it's more and morally justified to kill the person raping if doing so prevents the rape True. of the other person tied up. Okay, that's good. I agree with that. So backing up, you made a statement. You said human life is incredibly important. Um, I would argue against that. I don't think human life is intrinsically or unequivocally incredibly important. I think that there are things that you can do to trade away kind of the importance of your life. One of those things would be aggressing on other people. 
Um, the more extreme version of this would be incredible aggressions against other people. So for instance, when you are willing to murder somebody or less severely, when you're willing to rape somebody, it feels like the value of your life when held in comparison to other people's lives, especially your victim, is gonna be severely diminished. And I feel like this is a justification for things like punishment to crime, jail time, like the reason why we're willing to take away some level of freedom or violate the rights of other people, even through violence, through punishment, is because they have kind of given away a bit of that value or a bit of that um, moral consideration for their life. Do you think or do you disagree with that? Um, I would say like... And the reason why I'm gonna argue that you I, agree with that, just before you say that, so it doesn't feel like I'm trying to like corner you, is because you told me that killing person A would be better than killing person B because A was about to rape somebody. So it seems like even in your mind intuitively, you feel like A's life is worth a little bit less than B's life. It feels like that is the case. The problem though is this leads a lot to dehumanization, right? We get to points where, oh, this person did this thing, this person is a blank, therefore we can dehumanize them, therefore their life is worth less, therefore if they get murdered. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's a dangerous road to go down. I mean, I this has nothing to do with like, all right, let's go outside for a bit. Uh, when people say on Twitter that they love to just kill pedophiles and rapists and they wish they would all just like die or, you know, they put these fantasies, right? Yep. This is like similar ideology to what was used against LGBT people in the past. Like think about the pink sure, triangle. Sure, but let's go, let's get away from that. they were all lumped in that. Yeah, let's get yeah, away okay. from Twitter stuff. So let's ask, is dehumanization, is dehumanization necessarily a bad thing? When we say dehumanization, what do we really mean here? Um... Or I can give you a definition and you can tell me if, you, if I agree or disagree, because I'm not trying to trap you. Sure, sure. Give me so, your definition. I think that when we talk about dehumanization in general, I think we're usually talking about treating somebody like they're not a human. I think that's kind of like the common way of looking at it. I would argue that for the purpose of an ethical conversation, when we talk about dehumanizing somebody, we're talking about stripping them of their moral consideration. So whether or not we ought to harm them or not, right? I would argue that in that sense, if you agree with that level of dehumanization, I would argue that in that sense, dehumanization isn't necessarily a bad thing. Because if somebody is about to go and kill two people, or even about to go and kill one person, it seems like we value that person's life. We have less moral consideration for them than the person that they're going to kill. Maybe because you can argue that they're I mean, performing a form of dehumanization themselves. Yeah, but I, w I would argue that like it's wrong to dehumanize people. When you dehumanize these people who've done these awful things, you're distancing yourself from them. But sure, but like the question might the be to do these things. Sure, but so here's another question: Are we dehumanizing them, or are they arguably dehumanizing themselves, and then we treat them appropriately? So, for instance, if a dog were to come up and try to kill somebody, or let's say a dog was going to run up to bite somebody but it might be a really bad bite. Do we have the right to kick or kill that dog? Um, well, I don't I don't value a dog's life as much as a human's life. So if the dog is like biting people and it's a danger to a human mm -hmm. life, I think a human life is superior to a dog's life. Sure, if a human decides to walk up and attack somebody, I feel like part of the implicit buy-in that we have of being humans with each other is we kind of agree to respect each other's space, privacy, autonomy, you know, their health. If somebody's willing to take a step and violate that agency, aren't they engaging in a form of like self dehumanization a little bit? I wouldn't say that that makes them unhuman though. Like they're still, and that's the thing, is like people treat them like they're not human, but they are still human. Human beings can do really bad things. Do you think that they're treating their victims as human? Or do you think they're dehumanizing their victims? They probably are dehumanizing to an extent. I think dehumanization is bad across the board. Right, just because somebody else is doing something bad doesn't mean we have to fall victim to the same behavior. Well, we can be better. Be than careful, that. though. We're not falling victim to the same behavior because a defensive action is not the same as an aggressive action. Um. Let's say somebody walks a, up to me with a knife and they're about to stab me, and then I pull out a gun and I shoot them. We wouldn't say, "Well, both of you engaged in the same behavior. You're going to be violent." There's a difference because the, the behavior is different. An aggressive behavior is probably different than a defensive behavior. Yeah, I mean, it's more morally justifiable, obviously, to act in self-defense. I mean, there comes a point sometimes where it's like, you know, it's hard to tell, like, you know, who, I mean, when a conflict is a conflict, you know, sometimes it's like, if you keep it going, keep it going, then it can be both sides are bad regardless of who started. Now, yeah, they could be, but we're not, we're just, we're yeah. just in the very simple yeah, like, gotcha, ethical gotcha. world right now. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, I guess to summarize my argument, like, um, I, I feel like for several reasons, it's okay to escalate 
and take violent action against somebody that is performing a violent action against you, if they're not willing to respect your onto- your autonomy, if they're dehumanizing you, I think it's okay to, to return that favor and kind of protect yourself. I think that's acceptable. Um, I also don't think it's fair to ask a victim to respect the autonomy of another person when their autonomy isn't being respected. Um, and I don't think that an aggressive action is, is viewed the same morally as a defensive action. That if somebody's willing to aggress on one person, then them like returning a defensive action, I don't think that's the same type of thing, even if it's literally the same action. If somebody pulls out a gun to shoot somebody and they pull out a gun and they shoot them before they can be shot, I don't think these are the same action. I think they're fundamentally different, right? Because one is done aggressively and one is done defensively. So I feel like, um, yeah. I, I feel like there's so many differences in here that, yeah, just ultimately <laughs> telling a victim that they need to bear the brunt of another person's aggression um, just because we have to respect the other person's life when that person isn't even respecting life. I, I don't buy that. I, or I don't think that's a good justification for, for forcing victims to be raped, I guess. Yeah. Someone can be respect, like someone can disrespect you. Um, but you still have like, that doesn't give you the right to disrespect their like being a human being. Sure. But know? I mean, like, I would argue it depends on the level of disrespect, right? I, I guess so. Um, but I, I think in like ninety like nine first ninety nine percent of cases, like it could you know be ninety nine percent of cases, but it's still gonna be situational. If I walk up to you and I say I wanna cut off like an arm, but I've got a doctor right here and they're gonna like patch you up afterwards, you're not gonna there's a zero percent chance of you dying, but I wanna cut your arm off. Do you have a right to defend against that violently or do you have to just bear that? Well, I feel like you do have a right to defend against that. Well with lethal force, let's say the only way you can win is with a gun and by killing me and the doctor that are coming to take your arm. Unfortunately, yeah. Well, then, wait, why in this case? Why when it's about your arm, but not if it's about your vagina, not if it's about getting raped? Not you in particular, but yeah, like I, I've had I've had this argument before. Um, I would say, like, an arm, I mean, you're cutting... I mean, I, I have to really think about it. I, I guess I don't see rape in the same kind of arm as, like, cutting off somebody's, like, complete arm. I mean, you're literally like- Well, they're both just like big inconveniences, right? You can live without an arm, like plenty of people do it. Yeah, but I mean, that's like your your body is permanently like altered because of that. It's like obviously gonna be mutilated. Uh, Whereas like rape is more psychological than anything else. I mean, you could get an STD, but like, you know, besides that. Okay, where does the mutilation start or stop? What if somebody comes up and they just wanna like leave a scar on your arm, they wanna cut your arm, but you'll be fine. A scar, like cutting it off? No, 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 just like cutting it with a knife. They don't want to scar your arm. Uh, that would be really painful. Sure, but they're not gonna kill you. Do you have a right to defend yourself or? Probably, I mean, maybe not murder in this case. The same like, murder is the only way you can defend yourself. They're coming at you with a knife. They're gonna say, I'm not gonna kill you, but I'm gonna cut you up a little bit. Yeah, I mean, I guess so, I guess so. I just- So if you can defend in all like these other ways, to... is it just why? Okay, what if somebody's not? What if somebody's gonna come and punch you a ton? They're gonna punch you in the stomach, punch you in the face, leave a lot of bruises, but they'll heal. Do you have a right to bear that? Um, yeah, punching is, is probably okay. Uh, actually, well, I actually I have to think about it. I feel like you're trying to like draw a line here, of, like exactly where I believe. Well, I'm just because wherever your line is, I would say that punching or cutting somebody is probably not as bad as raping somebody. But you seem to have a difference. I. This. I I guess I do. Maybe I'm weird in that aspect. I've gotten a lot of blowback for this. Yeah, I, I just, I, I mean, to me, I've never seen rape as extreme as these other things. Okay, but I think I mean, most people just, probably view rape as being pretty extreme, right? Most people probably do, yes. I mean, I, it's just my experience. I just, I think it's like, you well, know. Well, but we're not arguing of just your, maybe you personally don't care. Right, people can, for a variety of reasons, not care. But if we're talking about like moral principles for society, we probably have to keep in mind like what would an average person's expectation be, right? Yeah, no, definitely. The average person views rape in a very, very negative light. Sure, and uh, most people probably know that, including the rapists probably know that. Most people really don't want to be raped, right? Yeah, most people probably don't want to get raped. Sure. That so if somebody's walking up. Rape is that you don't want to be raped. Sure. So if somebody's walking up to perform a rape, and you can, and they, most people consider this worse than like getting cut or getting beat up a lot, like they probably should, it feels like they should be able to defend themselves, right? Even if that includes killing the other person. I guess so. I mean, I I, I just, it's really tough for me though. I, I, I guess, I, like, like I said, I've had enough debates to be like, you know what, if it's like for sure this person's gonna get raped, it's like they probably have the right to defend themselves. They probably do. 
Okay. What else do we, what do we disagree on then? Or what else do we disagree on? So I just want to ask you this. I want to, I want to ask you. So if somebody comes to your house and they want to steal your TV, do you think it's like, okay to kill that person? If they're, if they're just robbing your house, they want to take a few of their things. If they're, they're invading your property, is it right to kill that person in self-defense when you're not actually in danger? I think if they're on notice, I think it's okay to do so. If somebody comes into your house and you say, hey, get away from that TV or I'm going to kill you because that's the only thing I can do. And the other person says, no, fuck you. I'm not going to hurt you, but I'm going to steal the TV. As long as they've got warning, they're on notice, they know the consequences. If they decide to steal it, then they're the ones that are earning themselves the, the, the getting killed. So yeah, I think it's okay in that sense. Well, that person made a declaration that the other person's life isn't in danger, and that person took the declaration and shot them anyway, which is an inherently despicable thing to do, in my opinion. Sure, but the person was put on notice that if they were going to continue to violate the autonomy of that other person, they were going to be shot. So I would argue they make the cho- they make uh, the choice for it. That I mean, I don't know if that's autonomy because the person is not engaged in any bodily harm. They're just no, but in a liberal society, we generally have an understanding that we have property rights and there is property that we own. And taking somebody's property is, an, is a form of violating their autonomy. And if the other person is on notice that we live in a society and in this society, it is recognized that I own this property. And if you're going to steal it from me, I am going to shoot you and kill you. If the other person, assuming they are of sound mind, continues to make the choice to steal it, then they've made the choice to get shot. Yeah, but I don't think that that's warranted of like, death i don't think death should be the crime of like going on a person's property like well, then you should only steal you, if that's the case then you should just steal from people that are bigger than you they could beat you up and then you won't get killed uh i mean wh- what do you mean steal from somebody bigger than that how does that have any relevance here well because you could argue that if somebody goes to steal from you but it's like a 12 year old then you probably shouldn't shoot and kill them you should probably just like smack them around a bit or like throw them to the side because you don't have to kill them to get them to stop stealing from you but I don't think you should be forced to have to endure somebody else's violation of your autonomy. And if the only way you can stop them is up through lethal means, then I think lethal means are permissible. But that's the thing is like in this situation, I mean, you could like call the cops, you could like take a picture, you know, and then potentially get those things back. If you take a picture, I mean, well, so now we're, we've moved identify from the, the person. We move from the ethical debate now to the practicality. We can move to some of the practicality if you want, but we're moving off the ethical debate, just recognizing that. I still feel in the ethical debate, if somebody's making the choice to steal something, they've been put on notice that they'll be killed if they do it, and they continue to do it anyways. They've made the choice to get shot. That's a consequence that they've totally earned. But if you move to the practical side of things, taking a picture means you're never getting it back. You probably won't get it back. Calling the cops, maybe they could help, but if the cops show up, you're back at the same dilemma as you were in before, right? What if the cops show up and then the person's stealing the thing and the cops are like stop or we're going to shoot you isn't it the same thing now now that you've called the cops you've just you've you've moved you've externalized now the responsibility to them for lethal force um i would say that i i understand what you're getting at i would say that calling the cops you're not actually i feel like it's um what is this thing is it it it's like a i forget what i'm, I'm referring to but it, it's something it's like a moral dilemma I'm thinking of. Mm-hmm. You're not actually doing the action, you're making somebody else do the same action. And so like, because we're not the one doing it, we tend to think it's okay. Um, my hope would be, the problem is that I don't trust the police's judgment to do the right thing. Um, well, so sure, but you're the I one that just mentioned like, calling the police, no? Yeah, yeah, I, I, I did. Um, if the police responded with violence and murder, that would be a wrong of the police. But I don't think that it would necessarily be super fair to blame that on the person calling the person yeah, but if you call, call the police, police I, aren't they necessarily going to respond in a violent manner like um i think maybe but not necessarily well, like, let's say that have- you say i'm gonna kill you if you don't leave and the guy's like fuck you i'm still anyway you're like fuck so then you call the cops the cops show up what are the cops gonna do they're gonna pull their guns out and they're gonna say you need to drop it what if the guy then says no i'm not going to drop it i'm gonna keep stealing it well the cops have to shoot the guy eventually uh, unfortunately, that in America, because we ha- live in a golden culture, that's probably what would happen. Um, but the hope would be that, like, you would be able to get the person to stop by non-lethal methods, put them in handcuffs. I know, realistically, not super likely, uh, but I would say, like, it's probably more ethical. To, like, if someone's going to steal my TV, steal a few possessions, I-, I just, like, let them. It's, like, it's not worth putting myself in danger. It's not p- worth putting this other person in danger. I just sure. don't so think these it's are, a moral thing to do. Well, these are questions of practicality, not ethical questions, right? Assuming you could kill the person easily with a gun without putting yourself in danger. If you put yourself in danger, there are other ethical considerations to make, but that's a more complicated situation rather than just trying to figure out the moral principle for this one, right? Like, it's just, <sighs> should you be forced to sit and watch somebody steal your property? There's nothing you can do about it. 
Yeah, I mean, I say it's like, it's fine. I mean, the only thing is like, obviously, if you don't take any action, the argument can be made that like, oh, this could happen more in the future because people know they can get away with it. Um, so like, I can understand that argument. I just feel like there's a way to prevent crime without like- Sure, let's look, so let's- For stealing TV. Let's pretend that we live in that ethical world, right? What if two dudes go to the gym, get shredded? These are big guys, okay? Nobody's ever beating these guys up. Nobody's ever taken them down. They get gas masks and they start going to houses and stealing shit. Don't these guys basically get to steal things unlimitedly because now nobody can ever stop them because they're not allowed to kill them and they can't beat them up? Um, I feel like if they did it enough, people would be able to identify them and you know the police would have some method of capturing them. Um, yeah, but let's know, say the police um, can't find them. These guys wear masks every time they wear gloves. I'm just talking in the ethical part. Like, aren't these guys basically given carte blanche to go into any house and steal whatever they want because nobody can kill them? They're not more ethically allowed to. Let's say we live in a perfectly ethical society except for these two people. Like, I guess so. Um, but like, I feel like there's a way to deal with it that doesn't involve murder. And I feel like most people are more reasonable, but let's say that these guys aren't. Yeah, I mean, we can agree that if you can resolve it without killing them, that's probably preferential. But if that is yeah. the only way to do it, then. I mean, I don't. I don't want to say like just like take the things. Like I don't. I don't want people to like be forced to like take it. But it's like I would much rather that somebody you know take a few of my things and I'm unharmed and that nobody. Sure, but I'm not asking to, what you, you know, would rather do. That's a that's a question of personal preference. We're just having an ethical conversation. On can you kill the person, or should you be forced to watch um, them violate your autonomy, even though you've given them a warning? And even though they continue to choose the action that you've told them will let them get killed, they keep doing it. Like, should you be forced to just sit there and watch it happen? Uh, I guess so. But my hope would be that the police would use something like a pepper spray, a mace, a taser, destabilize the person, use the handcuffs, and that, that's, that kind of thing could work out. And I feel like it would. Sure, but even on um, practicality, like, police don't always get there in time, right? They might be in your house in and yeah, out in like five minutes. So should they you be forced to don't. watch it happen if you could stop it otherwise? I just, I don't believe that murder is justifiable here. Well, it's not murder, we're talking about killing, right? Yeah, yeah, I, I've, I've had people say like, well, actually murder, killing, like, they're, you know, killing is the word you should be using. Okay, fine, killing. Um, okay, I mean, I guess we were at bedrock. I think we just fundamentally disagree. Um, what else is Pretty there? much. Um, oh. yeah, I up? have one that in case you guys want to weigh in on this, I'm curious what both of you would say. And this might, this kind of brings in that time element of when is it okay? Because I'm sure that Stephen, for example, you would say, well, at some point, you know, a year later, it's not okay. And so Cain Velasquez is on the thumbnail, who's a UFC fighter that a lot of people have heard this story back in February. His, uh, he had thought that his son was molested at a daycare by a daycare worker. And in fact, the daycare worker was charged with molesting children at this daycare. So probably was the case that his son was molested. Cain Velasquez went after him and shot at him, and he's now being charged. He hit the somebody else who was in the vehicle of the molester, it, who was apparently unrelated to the crime, as far as we know. So the what I can't find is how long after it was. So in all yeah, the different never, articles. You should never do it after. It's only to prevent somebody from doing an immoral action. It's not to punish them. Punishment should be delegated to the state, right? Yeah, I 100% I agree. Um, this is, yeah, 100%. This person didn't even get to go to trial, like to be proven like innocent or guilty. I mean, like, I don't think that people should just be raping people because they think they're rapists and pedophiles. It opens too many dangerous doors. I mean, I feel like my position on this isn't too surprising. Um, yeah, I, I don't think so. And by the way, I just want to address something in the previous thing we were talking about. I think the solution is just build some better security measures for homes. I think that'll help, but yeah. You got it. Anything else? Not that I can think of, no. Now, it doesn't matter how, if, if it's a crime of passion, Stephen, if it's virtually, so I, th I think you're holding the line. You're saying, strictly speaking, it, if it's even a moment after, it's just a, it's conceptually different enough to where it's not preventing harm. If, a, if somebody done. is in bed, guy goes into their bed and rapes them, and the guy is done, and he gets up, and he's getting dressed, and he's about to leave. You can't attack the person at that point. You're no longer acting in self-defense. Now you're acting in revenge. Gotcha. I see your position clearly. 
We're going to jump into the questions. And I want to say, folks, our guests are linked in the description. So if you'd like to hear more from them, you certainly can. You can learn all about their views. We're going to jump into it first with this question from Kyle James. Okay, can I read that one later? That's weird. <laughs> Kwani Upstate says, it's about me. Uh, this is what they say, you have the right to self-defense. And if someone is sexually assaulting you, of course you can hurt them. If someone is raping you, who knows if they want to kill you? Are you kidding me? Um, boring. That's a different. That's a different question. Um, that's a question of practicality, not an ethical question. Um, it, like, there's different practical considerations to be made for if somebody is raping you, or are they also potentially going to murder you as well? That would change the nature of how we would answer those questions. But it, it wasn't part of what we were addressing. Gotcha. This one coming in from. Appreciate your question. Samar, good to see you, says for both of you, if you have a non-lethal solution to a violent circumstance, is it always better to take that solution no matter the context? Why or why not? I think arguably you probably have some moral responsibility to escalate up to a level um, before death of uh, whatever the minimum threshold is to like end the situation. Um, so, for instance, if somebody comes in and they are being violent, like, you know, being able to be violent back if you're larger than them, you probably have an obligation. If a 100-pound person is attacking a 200-pound person, the 200-pound person probably doesn't have the right to pull out a gun and shoot them because they can probably resolve it through other matters. So, yeah, you probably have some obligation to go through, like, the steps to, to resolve things non-lethally before hitting lethal force. Yeah, I would say absolutely yes. If you have the option to use a non-lethal method and you don't, then in my opinion, that's warranted for a charge for murder. Like you should be like criminally charged for that because it's like you could have non-lethally like ended the situation and you didn't. That's just murder in my eyes. Like You got it. And thank you very much for this question coming in from do appreciate it. This one coming from Gotcha. This place gamer says Rose agrees with him, but for the optics. They say, Rose, they're coming at you. They say, Rose, what could Destiny show that would make you agree to move to his side of debate, of this debate? Um, I mean, like, I'm very strong in the position that murder is just this really awful thing that, you know, there's pretty much no real justification. I guess there's like a few things, right? I, I don't know if there's really anything that he could say. I'd have to really fundamentally change, like, my core values in this instance. Um, maybe like, I, I don't know. I have to think about it. I, I just feel so strongly about this. You I don't it? think there's a lot you could say. Yeah, for me on you're... my side just because i'll answer it because i think it's fair i should answer the same question if you construct societies where everybody is following the same moral rules i'm looking for the society that i think produces the most moral good or allows for the most moral actions versus the other one that allows for less moral good or less moral actions so if i think of one society where any victim could kill a rapist and then i look at another society where any victim could never kill a rapist i see one society where people are allowed to if they pick the right targets rape with impunity and more or less get away with it and another society where the only people that are getting killed are the people that are choosing to rape and they're exercising their agency to do so so if that is the consequence at the very least they're earning that consequence i don't think a rape victim is earning getting raped ever it's never their fault that somebody chose to rape them but in the other society i think it's okay if people are being killed because they've chosen an action where being killed is like part of your implicit buy-in to like that's a chance of something that might happen if i try to do something so if you could show me another world where the other world is better i don't think a world where a bunch of people aren't getting killed but are allowed to rape with impunity is better than the world where um rape potential rape victims could defend themselves and kill potential rapists i think that's a better world well i would say the world where rapists get away without being killed is pretty much the world we live in with a few like except cases and i think it's a pretty fine world we live in now so yeah. you got it this one coming in from summer strikes again says rose self-defense slash bodily autonomy is a core tenant of liberalism do you favor a modern liberal democracy if not what is your alternative to it um, so when people ask about my political views, I don't really know how to answer that. It's just like, I have such extreme opinions that like can be on one side or another, but it's like, I don't like when people try to pin me down on that. It's like, I don't know where I stand politically, you know, when I have like these big worldview questions, it's like, I just have positions that make sense to me. And I get flack for that sometimes, um, because people say that I have contradictory beliefs, which I personally don't. I just feel like my worldview is different from what a lot of people have seen and like the beliefs that share. Um, is there like, am I, is there something, the question I'm missing or? 
I think you've got it. Okay. The only it, <clears throat> the only reason I was if I looked like I was making a face, it was only because this next one, Kyle James says, I don't know if they understood what you meant by humanization, and I'm confused now too. They say destiny. If humanization is the measure of moral permissibility. Wouldn't James be able to do anything he wants because he's such a manly man? <laughs> okay. What did you, can you define humanization? Just I just think when people talk about like humanizing or dehumanizing people in an ethical sense, what they're really talking about is removing the ethical considerations that humans get. That's really what we're talking about. And I think that there are actions that you can do that make that ethical consideration come into question. Because I think part of the ethical consideration you get is that at least at some point, you'll generally be some moral agent that could choose to do things otherwise or could choose to do things that are good or bad um, and if you start making a bunch of choices that are like horrible and evil time and time and time and time and time again I think that will reflect on the humanization of you as a person you're dehumanizing yourself in a way you're kind of losing your right to be, have certain respects in society if you're not going to respect other people in the same way you got it this one from this place gamer says rose in the world that allows rape there would be more abortions is this not killing a person who was not part of the crime? Yeah, I do realize that there would be more abortions. I mean, I here's the thing. I'm anti-abortion, right? But when it comes to, like, one of the reasons I'm pro-life and people don't understand this is, like, people say that's a big win for men and big win for rapists. Well, actually, no. These are a bunch of men that have to pay for child support now. These are a bunch of men who have to, like, raise a kid they don't want to raise. I mean, I'd say that it like, you know, everybody should be held accountable for these actions, you know, not just the women, the men too. So, you know, there's going to be, I guess there's going to be more abortions. I guess there's going to be, right, um, mm -hmm. more people being born. I don't necessarily see that as a horrible thing. Gotcha. Kyrie Irving says, Destiny, you say that you're a utilitarian. Wait, your mic is kind of cutting out. Your mic is totally cut out right now. Check this. Okay, try again. Hello. They say destiny. You Wait, somehow your mic got seven million times louder. I don't know how. Let me <laughs> double check this. Okay. You serious? Oh my gosh, you're right. Tuesday. Hello, hello. Let me uh, in, see in if sound I can settings and a recording. Did like a microphone boost just get turned on? Not on the mic, but on like the in your recording tab on Windows. If you go to like sound, I don't think so. you go to. It sometimes has a, a mind of its own, Stephen. But I promise, I think it's back to normal. They, this one, they say, Destiny, that you say that you are a utilitarian, but when Rose responds to your hypotheticals with psychological effects that may occur, you say they don't matter in ethics. Why? Um, it's 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 the next level of consideration we'd have to get to, um, but they're not. But for the level that we're arguing, they weren't relevant. So, for instance, you might argue that like, um, oh, geez, you, you might argue that like you have a right to kill people because if if you try to rape somebody, then you have the right to kill that person because you're defending yourself from harm, right? And then, it, but it, but so that's like the reason why you, to defend yourself from harm, you kill somebody. But let's say when we go up to the next level of the psychological considerations, let's say that we find out that when you kill somebody, your mind gets wiped and you're actually like fucked for the rest of your life. Well, that would consider us to reevaluate it because now the moral principle is gone. You're not actually defending yourself. You're actually causing yourself more harm than you would by just stopping the person or by then just letting the person rape you or something, right? If that was the case. So there are some future psychological valuations that we can make that would change the nature of the ethical question. For instance, like if you try to self-defend, but you cause more harm to yourself than the other person in the end, it's not really self-defense at that point. So we can make those decisions um, later, but, but it wasn't relevant to the level of the conversation we were at, I think. You got it. Featherless Biped and Heat Shield, thanks for your based super stickers and Minecraft player. This is a chance, Stephen, for you, because I'm curious. They say, it may be ethical to smite your rapist, but is it ethical to be into sonic inflation? What was sonic inflation again? Um, you're going to have to Google that one, James. Is this, can I do it on my work computer? Uh, I wouldn't do that, James. Steven, I already have. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh. <laughs> All right, this is what going in from. Fish deserved it, says was John. Can you guys <clears throat> Did you Google it too, Rose? They say, was John Wick in the right for taking revenge against the people who killed his dogs? Ethically, how would your... Framework applied to John Wick, Steven. 
No, you can't kill people for... You can't take revenge like that. Ven vengeance is never, like, a morally good thing. But, I mean, like, for movies, it makes for good movies, of course. Well, vengeance could theoretically be justified if for some reason the legal system wasn't spitting out, like, good justice. But that gets m more complicated at that point. Gotcha. This one... Bear with me on the mic, folks. I think it's... <clears throat> hopefully it's uh, going back to normal. This one coming in from... Do appreciate your question. Yeah. New Claire Recreations says, Rose, you say you're willing to shoot the rapist if it's your only option and it would concern your own child. But in general, you say it's wrong. I still don't understand what's the meaningful difference for your differing in these two contexts. Um, I guess my general, okay, so first of all, the hypothetical being brought up is that this is like a five-year-old, I can believe, um, based on like this old man, right? This is the most extreme example I think a person can think of. Now, obviously, I feel like if someone is going to rape a person, that's pretty bad. I, I don't think it's really justified ever, but I would like concede that it's probably okay. I have to think a lot about my positions here because I'm not like entirely sure. <sighs> I don't. I don't know. I mean, I, I guess it's not very different. I just think that it's a much more extreme version, which is why it's like I feel like if I were to say no, it's actually not okay to prevent this kid from being raped. That 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 sounds like a very yikesy thing, and I, I want to stand back from saying that because that that just seems like a very bad thing for me to say. You got it. And this one coming in from, let me just reload, see if we've got any other ones. Want to say, I, Steve and I just heard back from someone today. I've, there is a, this is just a special one, but I won't, I won't say the name. But I've got to tell you folks, we're working on setting up a debate. It would be ginormous. It would be tremendous. It would be epic. And Steven, it's like, it's so close to being confirmed. Do you know what I'm talking about? I, we don't talk that much, so I have a good inkling of what you're talking about, yeah. You got it, all right, well, it's, I'm waiting on the final confirmation within a week, they said they, they uh -huh. me. Dr. Wolf Star says, what is a woman, for both of them, I don't know what it, hashtag, I don't know what it is. Um, I guess I'm a trans woman, so I'll start this. I think a woman is somebody who applies the aspects of traditional femininity and identifies and carries herself and lives full time as a woman. Basically, this is somebody who wants to be seen as a woman the entire, like every aspect of your life, right? I don't believe that someone wears a dress and automatically is a woman, right? I don't believe the drag queens are women. And I just don't believe that being feminine on its own makes you a woman. I just believe you have to want to make an effort to, if you're a trans woman, obviously, but basically you apply the aspects of traditional femininity and you identify as a woman that makes you a woman gotcha am i supposed to answer that even thoughts um i i like i mean i would argue there's a gender sex distinction from a sex point of view like a, a woman is an adult human female where female is somebody that has like the gamuts of a female and then from like the gender perspective um whatever the cultural performance of the woman is at that time um would probably would i say a woman is in that sense but if you don't believe in gender sex distinction then that's like a separate conversation you got it. This one coming in from Summer. Appreciate it. <clears throat> he says, I want to introduce a spicy, relevant topic. Rose and Destiny, was Kyle Rittenhouse justified in shooting the people who were attacking him? I mean, obviously, my opinion is known on this. I would say yes. Okay, I actually wrote a whole thing down. So if you don't, if you don't mind, I'm just going to write this. Uh, this is a guy who showed up to a protest with an AR-15 wanting to be vigilante. I, it's my opinion that if he didn't show up, these two people would still be alive today, and that his presence caused a danger to everyone else there uh, at the protest. Uh, I mean, they were literally protesting against someone who got shot against police, and here he goes shooting more people. Um, you know, I feel like the people were coming after him, trying to take his gun away because they thought that he was an active shooter, and in my opinion, he was. And if people did this to a school shooter, they'd be seen as heroes. Uh, yeah, that's what I had written down. You got it. This one coming in from G Day says, can someone please explain to me why normal societal ethics and norms would apply when one party has flagrantly and maliciously disregarded those rules of said society? 
Is that for Rose? I think that it's well, technically for both of you, I, I, maybe depending. But I think norms on only I, work by definition if everybody follows them. You have you can't have just one side following norms. So when one side casts off norms, I think the other side is forced to. Otherwise, you end up in a shitty prisoner's dilemma where you're the loser taking the cooperate option every time, and the other person's fucking you over. Yeah, and I just hate this idea that some people have that like conservatives are so much morally worse than like liberals. I, I just I feel like it's a worrying thing people see where they try to dehumanize the other side. It's like, yeah, we can disagree on politicals, but I don't think like conservatives are necessarily evil. And to act like they're acting so unethically and immorally, I feel like you're giving them the worst faith possible, and that's not really going to change anything. Like you want to build bridges with these people. You got it. And that's let's see. G D A said a follow up. They said the rapist home invader is not playing the game. Namely, they think they're saying like they're not following along with society what moral principle compels you to play the game then they say uh, that must be to rose right because i would say you don't have to of course right and what game are they talking about i think they mean like playing by society's rules still even though the other person clearly completely flouted uh touted what's the uh they're saying, so, <clears throat> despite the person completely neglecting to follow those rules. Yeah, so I, I understand, like, you know, just because somebody is acting out of line and, you know, that doesn't mean we automatically disregard um, what makes our society work for what it is, you know, to say that, like, oh, this one person acted out of line. So everybody, it's okay to act as immoral as possible. I feel like that leads like a really bad road. Like, you know, you could see somebody's like, oh, well, this person did this awful thing. So I could do that thing, too. It's like, I feel like we got to break the cycle some, you know, because if we just keep it making justifications for that, I don't think that's good. I would make a, I'll make an appeal, a complicated appeal to uh, evolutionary biology here, I guess. Um, every, throughout all of society, there are a whole bunch of games being played. We could kind of boil this down to a, a game called tit for tat, where if there is some creature that hits you and doesn't get hit back, then they'll destroy whatever it is they're engaging with. They'll hit, tit, 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 and if there's no tap to come back, then they'll continue to um, engage in said thing. If there is, it, 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 all across the animal kingdom, and I think even like the fungi and insect kingdom, there are very complicated games of tit for tat, or tit for tat tat, or tit, tit for tat for tit, with these back and forths where there need to be proper punishments in place. Otherwise, you get kind of these bad actors in the animal kingdom that can just override and destroy any other system as like a form of parasitic leech. So I would argue that morally, to some extent in society, we probably need some kind of tit for tat. Otherwise, if you're never willing to tat you're going to get somebody that will infinitely tit in your society and things get really fucked, basically. But Well, I would say that we're in the most peaceful time in human history and we didn't get there by being super aggressive and tough on criminals and stuff. We got there by being more lenient, by being more forgiving, by being more humane. And I feel like those things have led us to a point where most people are much more peaceful than we are. Um, maybe, but I don't know if that's relevant to the ethical question at all. Do you might actually actually the, the, there might be an argument I don't have the history to argue this there might be an argument that our increase in tit for tat has actually led to the, one of the more peaceful eras in human history um, so for instance one form of tit for tat might be the criminal justice system and I think criminal justice in the way that we practice it in the West is a relatively new thing throughout all of human history that somebody is brought to stand trial they're punished for an action etc cetera, etc cetera, that like when you go past like before 2000 years ago or whatever you'll, you'll have whole roving bands of people that will just rape and murder people you had pirates in the oceans that would just steal shit um, you had societies that if you got caught doing anything bad they just kill you because they have to send a message to thieves because it was so hard to find and punish people um, I think that um, the, the existence of criminal justice system as a form of like a socially enforced tit for tat has probably kept us more moral than in the past where you just were kind of like in the wild west literally and figuratively sometimes yeah I would just say though that like innocent people plead guilty all the time I mean these systems are very flawed and have lots of problems and I just think the way the prison system is currently set up I mean the people get raped all the time in prison people get like sure there are problems but like it's better yeah. than not having one I would say I think we just need a complete redesigning of the prison system. That is my personal opinion, because I just think the way it is, it's not ethically moral to really send people there because of all the issues it has. 
Um, I think that prison is a good idea in concept. I just don't agree with it in practice currently. Sure, and but we it's still be better than not people. having prison, right? We can improve it, but... Well, I, I don't think that we should, like, mass murderers, like, roam the streets. So, I guess so. Mm-hmm. You yeah, get like, Yeah. This is from Kyle James. I will read all of the, the other <laughs> those super chats later. Thank you for Displaced Gamer says, Destiny, if you knew for a fact that the rapist was not going to kill you, would you still feel it okay, that it's okay to kill the rapist? If that's the only way to stop them, yeah. Gotcha. This one coming in, for Rose in particular. Gina from Cologne says, you, Rose, you said you didn't think rape was that bad. So in your opinion, what is worse, getting raped or misgendering someone? Yeah, so um, as a transgender woman, I think misgendering can be really psychologically just harmful and cause a lot of harm. Obviously, I think probably raping someone is going to be a worse thing. I don't like comparing the two because they're so different in the ways and like misgendering is really only going to hurt. Like if you misgender a cis person, I don't think that cisgender person is really going to care that much. I've had a lot of turfs like me on Twitter. It's like they don't care when they get misgendered because it's like their gender is so obvious to them. And like, well, when, you know, we have a trans person, you know, we're just fighting for our existence to just be seen as who we are. So it's going to sing a lot harder. That being said, I do think the psychological impacts of being raped and not being able to trust anybody the way you do sex, it's probably a lot more harmful than misgendering somebody. 